Google pays their principal software engineers over $1 million each year. Facebook has a distinguished software engineer earning over $4 million per year. You've probably seen the videos where some random guy on the internet talks about how much money big tech companies pay their software engineers. Those videos may have left you asking yourself, how can these tech companies afford these six or seven figure salaries? I'd rather not keep you waiting, so if you don't wanna watch this entire video, the simple answer is that they pay their software engineers a lot of money, because these companies make a lot of money. If that answer isn't satisfying, then keep watching because I'm going to go in depth about how much these companies make and how those high salaries eat into their margins. By the end of the video, you may even feel sorry for these highly paid software engineers. The reason why these tech companies pay their software engineers so well is because of the revenue they bring in. Even though Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google are each considered tech companies, they make their billions of dollars every year in different ways. In 2020, Google brought in $182,527,000,000. 92% of this revenue came from Google services, which includes advertisements, Android, Chrome, hardware, Google Maps, Google Play, Search, and YouTube. Around 7% of Google's annual revenue came from Google Cloud. The remainder came from other bets, as well as hedges against potential losses. Facebook, now Meta, brought in less during the same time frame, but it was still $85,965,000,000. The bulk of Meta's revenue comes from advertising, with only 3% of revenue coming outside of their advertising business. While that 3% is relatively small, it does make up some segments of the business that are growing quickly. This includes their payments and hardware platforms. Then you have Apple, which had sales totaling $274,515,000,000. In terms of revenue, Apple is the most impressive, not because of how much revenue they bring in, Jeffrey Bezos has them beat there, <laughs> but because of how few products they offer that drive those numbers. In 2020, the company received half of their revenue from iPhone sales. 10% was from Mac, around 8% was from iPad, another 11% was from wearables and other accessories, and the other 19% was from their services. This adds up to 98%, and that's because the numbers I gave were approximations. Amazon brought in the most money for 2020 with total revenues of 386 billion billion $64 million. The bulk of this revenue came from sales in North America, which totaled $236 billion, $282 million. International sales trailed behind at just $104 billion, $412 million. Then last but not least was revenue from AWS, which brought in $45 billion, $370 million. While the revenue on AWS is lower than retail, the profit margins on cloud computing are much higher than selling consumer goods with same day shipping. AWS had an operating income of $13,531,000,000 compared to the net sales from North America and international totaling $9,368,000,000. Netflix, the company with very generous base salaries and benefit packages, brought in $25 billion during 2020. The company earned this money through their 200 million monthly subscribers, which is by far the most straightforward revenue stream among the FANG companies. Tech companies bring in an unfathomable amount of money. All of their business models models revolve around economies of scale. Netflix spent around $4 billion on original content in 2020, and while that's a lot of money, it's also a one-time expense. The amount of money related to streaming this original content is minuscule when compared to how much money the company makes on subscriptions each month. The same is true for online services offered by Amazon, Apple, Google, and Facebook. It costs a lot of money up front to build the new services, but when you have millions or billions of people using those services, it is relatively easy to make that money back. We now know how much revenue is generated by these big tech companies. Now it's time to talk about the salaries of the software engineers at these FANG companies. Starting off with Google, according to LinkedIn, they have 56,000 software engineers, although my gut tells me it's probably closer to 30,000 for the purposes of this video. I'm going to go with what LinkedIn tells me because finding employment data directly from these tech companies is seemingly impossible. I did cross-reference LinkedIn results with my current company and companies I've worked at in the past, and the results were fairly accurate. I do think these numbers are inflated for fame companies though, because dishonest people exist in the world. Also, even honest individuals may say they work at Google when they're only affiliated with the company 
through their Google Developer Experts program. That's enough of a tangent though, let's get in with the actual numbers. Salaries at Google start out at $192,000 per year for entry-level software engineers and go as high as $963,000 for principal software engineers. Since Google is a technology company, let's say 90% of their yearly revenue comes from their software engineers. That would mean $164,274,000,000 is all thanks to their software engineers. Let's say that of those 56,000 software engineers at Google, they all provide the exact same value to the company. Yes, I know this is an imperfect calculation because the more experienced individuals likely bring more value than new college graduates, but this is probably as close as we'll be able to get in this video. With that in mind, each software engineer at Google is responsible for $2,933,464. The average salary for a principal engineer at Google is $963,000. Google is able to double the return on their investment for their principal software engineers. It's even better for entry-level software engineers who generate 15 times as much revenue as they receive in compensation. Again, the basis for these numbers is imperfect, but this hopefully helps shed some light on why Google can pay their software engineers so well. Also, if you're curious about the benefits, the estimated total value of benefits for each software engineer is $16,977, which doesn't really break the bank for Google. Now that we've talked about Google and set the ground rules, the rest of the company should go much faster. Let's talk about Facebook, er, I mean Meta, next. According to LinkedIn, there are 17,000 software engineers working for Marcus Zuckerberg. Given Facebook and Google are fairly similar, I'm going to say that of the $85,965,000,000 in revenue, 90% of that is directly tied to the intellectual property created by their software engineers. This means $77,368,500,000 of revenue is from their software engineers. So after doing some quick napkin math, each of those 17,000 software engineers was responsible for adding $4,551,088 to Facebook's revenue numbers. There is one distinguished software engineer at Facebook making $4,490,000 per year. Even with that astronomically high salary, Facebook is able to turn a slight profit on their work. Of course, this only gets better for Mark's coin purse because his senior staff software engineers bring in over five times their salary, while his entry-level software engineers bring in nearly 20 25 times their salaries in annual revenue. Apple has 29,000 software engineers according to LinkedIn. Those software engineers can earn anywhere from $162,000 per year as entry-level employees, and on average, their salaries can get up to $768,000 per year as principal software engineers. Apple makes their money a bit different from Google and Facebook. Instead of creating software which can be scaled infinitely, the company creates software alongside their hardware. As we've seen in 2020 and 2020, 21, hardware does not scale infinitely, and there are some costs associated with that. Apple also owns and operates a number of high-end stores which have become essential for their business. With that in mind, I'm going to say that from Apple's $270,575,000,000 in revenue, only 50% of that is attributed to their software engineers. If we divide $137,287,500,000 by their 29,000 software engineers, we end up with $4,734,051. That means that a principal software engineer would bring in over six times their annual salary and revenue. Their entry-level software engineers bring in over 29 times their salary. That brings us to Amazon, which employs 58,000 software software engineers according to LinkedIn. An entry-level software engineer at Amazon earns an average salary of $165,000 per year, while the average principal software engineer earns around $611,000. Amazon earns the bulk of its revenue from selling products both directly and indirectly to their customers. Although AWS still brought in a substantial amount of money last year, with this in mind, I'm going to say that 45% of Amazon's revenue is attributed to the work of their software engineers. If you think that number is too high or too low, remember that I'm giving you the raw numbers that I'm working with, so you are free to make your own calculations and come to your own conclusions. If you do that, all I ask in return is you leave a comment below with your own calculations and 
why you chose the numbers that you did. Anyway, 45% of $386,064,000,000 is $163,728,800,000. That means that each of the 58,000 software engineers at Amazon are responsible for $2,995,324. That's not too shabby, but let's talk about Netflix. The company only brought in $25 billion in revenue last year. However, they did that despite only having 1,900 software engineers. The average senior software engineer at Netflix earns $521,000. And while the company has started to hire entry-level employees, there isn't enough data yet to incorporate that information into this video. So with that in mind, we'll stick with only senior software engineers for the time being. Netflix has a bit of a chicken and an egg problem because their applications wouldn't be useful without content and their content wouldn't be viewable without their applications. With that said, I'm going to say their software engineers are responsible for 50% of the revenue at the company, which works out to be $12.5 billion. When we divide that number by 1,900 software engineers, we see that each is responsible for $6,578,947. Of course, these numbers aren't precise. I'm sure someone in finance at each of these companies has far more accurate numbers. With that said though, I hope that this helps illustrate how much money the FANG companies bring in each year and how their highly compensated software engineers potentially impact that revenue. With the exception of Netflix, all of these salaries include some combination of base salary, bonus, and RSUs. If you're interested in learning about the salaries at these companies, then I'd recommend checking out this video I made on Google a while back. It was the first in the series, and it's a great place to start to learn more about these software salaries.